Hey guys, the last time we made a Q&A, you guys had asked us for a vlog and a blog. Unfortunately, due to the COVID situation, we cannot make a vlog. But we have started an official website for blogs. There are already two articles published on the blogspot. You can check them out on shinodiofficial.blogspot.com. Go check it right now after watching the video. Back with yet another video. This time I'm bringing back the second part of discovering the films of Oscar winning filmmakers and this time we're going to be doing the no let me give you a hint it's three films a trilogy it's won over 30 international awards made in India in 1950s of course the Apu trilogy guys there's a reason why these films are called one of the best not only in the terms of Indian cinema but also of world cinema these films are very experimental in terms of their content in terms of the acting and the way they're shot See, the acting was of two kinds, the conventional methods in Indian cinema in the 1950s. It was either the cinematic and theatrical acting where the characters were too over-expressive or it was the old-school theatre approach where it was very loud and magnificent. But this film kind of brings in a realism to the acting and the portrayal of the characters. A Ray never lets it be too melodramatic. When a shot is getting too melodramatic, the character is laughing very loud or he is going to cry, the scene cuts. And there's two kinds of moving on from the scene. It's either a time lapse or it's uh, either moving on to the another scene. He jumps time without any indication and that's something very ahead of time in 1950s. I think that's one of the reasons why these films are called ahead of their time and were awarded with 30 international awards. According to me, the strongest film of the trilogy is Pothar Panchali or The Song of the Little Road. But my favorite film in the trilogy is Apur Sansar or The World of Apu. I'll tell you why when I come to the film. Pothar Panchali is basically the story of a poor family in the 1920s. You could call the film a tragedy but it really isn't because it's about moving on in life and being optimistic and that's re something really really commendable talking about the shots in the film look at the contrast between the shots in the first half and the second half Oppo is shown very happy and content with what he has in the first half going to school brushing his teeth but in the second half uh, when the tragedy happens when his sister Durga dies he kind of realizes that there is a tragedy that has happened but he's not old enough to realize what has happened but at least he's mature enough to realize that there is a tragedy that has happened and he should feel for it and it's affecting his whole family it's not very into your face or direct it's very subtle and that's what makes the film's shots very special at the time in the 1950s it was forbidden to shoot in rain and darkness because they had not accomplished it but Ray and his team did both and did them very Successfully, at least in Indian cinema, they were the first ones to accomplish this in a very successful manner. The best performance according to me in all the three films overall is that of Karuna Banerjee or the actress who plays Oppu's mother. She convinced me the most. But the other actors also perform exceptionally. All of the acting is convincing and that's a big kudos to the actors. Moving on to the second one, Oparajito or The Unvanquished. Probably the last in my ranking of all the three films. Not that there is anything wrong with it, it's almost a perfect film. But it was for me the least convincing because the use of music and the exceptional use of metaphors and the fascinating uh, camera angles were not as good as the first one and third one and it was not as emotionally effective as the first one and the third one but it's still a very good and a very engaging film and you have to watch it if you have to watch the whole trilogy and it's still a very good film. The theme of unemployment is explored in all the three films. Hari Hart, who wanted to be a theatre playwright, who wanted to bring on new stories is forced to be a priest and a herbal medicine trader in order to feed his family. Even though he's successful and earning enough money to feed his family, he's still not very convinced with the job he's doing. Two continuing metaphors in the film. One is the train and the other is the rain. Yes. The train is the most fascinating thing to Apu in Pothar Panchali. He wants to see it, he wants to explore it and he wants to go in it. When he sees the train for the first time, the excitement in his face 
is dazzling and the way the scene is shot is extremely good but it becomes more familiar to him when he moves to Calcutta in Aparajito and he starts moving in it daily in Opus Sansar. Uh, and the rain is used also as a metaphor of devastation and not quite pleasant things. The reason why Op Opus Sansar is my favorite film out of the trilogy is because it brings it all together and gives it a climax that is extremely satisfying and the film itself explores some things that are very relevant even today the un unemployment even after uh, completing his college uh, when he goes out to get a job Apu doesn't get the right job and in the 1950s the situation was even severe because the rise of industries and all of that happened in the 1980s so you could imagine the kind of devastating unemployment that took place in the 1950s it's almost scary can I not talk about the beautiful music composed by Ravi Shankar and its exceptional use? See, the best music of all the three films is in Apur Sansar and Pathar Panchali. I loved the opening theme of Pathar Panchali because it's so exciting that it almost gives you goosebumps and the uh, ending theme of Apur Sansar. Let's talk about the climax in the three films, the three shots that tie together the whole trilogy. The first two shots, are the first two climaxes are very anticlimactic. Look at the shot in the first film where Apu and his family are moving away from the camera in a bullet ca bullock cart and in the se second shot or the second climax, Apu is moving away from the camera but in the third shot, the third climax, Apu and his son walk towards the camera indicating conclusion. Well, that's what makes the shots even more beautiful and give it an essence. There's a lot of other themes explored in this film. I can talk over an hour about them, but my sole purpose is to make these films popular and make people watch them. It's a cinematic experience. Please watch these films. So that's it for today, guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, share and subscribe. Until we meet the next time.